Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be reviewing The Ghost of Molly McKee Season 1 Episode 9B called Friend Off and you know, let's get started because I have other stuff I need to do so I'm going to do this quick not too quick of course we see you know, it's still a review um so just like I said at the end of the first half of the episode you know the the first segment um, where Libby fainted in, Molly said, you know, thank you, Scratch, you know, for letting me tell her about you. Immediately, we see Libby wake up from when, when she fainted, and it's still in the day, so I'm assuming just a couple minutes past, maybe an hour, but like, oh my goodness, how hard did she hit your head? And then Scratch is like, boo. And she's like, ah! And then, you know, Molly basically introduces everyone. Oh, you know, you know, and then, you know, Libby, um, this is Scratch, you're my friend, Ghost. And, Scratch, um, is the, oh yeah, I know Libby, she likes turtles, she's shy, she can recite poetry, her mom owns a bookstore, she's Jewish, and, like, oh, you know, basically saying, oh, she's boring, and then Libby's like, uh, I'm cataloging my bindings, ghosts are real, and, you know, I just say, oh, this is so great, we can all be best friends now, I don't have to lie anymore, and Libby and Scratch is like, whoa, hold on, Molly, and Libby's like, I... I am very particular who I have in my friend group. And Scratch, Scratch is like, yeah, I don't want to be friends with Libby. And Scratch makes a good point where they, your friends doesn't have to be friends with your other friends, if that makes sense. Like, you know, we don't all have to like each other. And then Molly's like, well, no, we can't. And no, Molly's just like, oh, okay, I just have to wait until it blooms naturally. He, he, he. Obviously, Scratch and Libby are not buying it. And, um... And basically, Molly's going to send up a, like, a scavenger hunt, basically, for both of them. And, you know, um, then they both mail it, um, um, what was it? Molly slides it in Scratch's little ghost house. And Scratch has been using the ghost house, which I think is really good continuity. And, um, you know, and Molly mailed it to Lippy, and they both read it at the same time. Oh, um, come to the, um, Lemming softball field, and, you know, um... And for was it for like some ice cream for my best friend and both Libby and Scratch say at the same time I knew I was their best friend and they both go and they're like what are you doing here Molly find me to have some ice cream with her and they're both like oh it's a Molly scheme and you see someone in this co a mascot costume and it's like you know this Molly right yeah I know okay before agreement and then you know Libby's like if I know Molly, and Scratch is like, yeah, I do. She would want us to do this or it will break her heart. And Libby's like, yeah, I guess we had to do it. And Molly's like, aha, my, my plan is working. And, you know, um... And basically, we have to go to, like... We first go to, like, an ice cream shop. And then the, she... The um, parlor lady is basically reciting a poem. Oh, you know, ice cream is as sweet as the friendship that you two will have someday. And he's like, oh, here's the ice cream. And the ice cream for the both of them, you know. And then Scratch just eats both of them because he's selfish like that. And Libby's like, hey, what else was for me? And I was like, yeah, what the heck, Scratch? But, you know, it's in his character. And Scratch like, threw up the letter, like, like on her face. I'm like, ugh. Even for Scratch, I was kind of, ugh. I didn't like that. But, um, you know, um, the new Libby, I did say, oh, we had to take a picture smiling. And they fake a smile for each photo shoot they do so they will smile and, uh, okay that was the next thing um and then they both try to it's oh it said doing the scavenger hunt if you really think you're better oh well, let's prove that you know, were better it's uh, okay and we basically get a montage of going to different landmarks and we're actually not really we're focusing on the landmarks but we're focusing on how how each friend um helped molly throughout season one or at least the first half of season one and we get a lot of callbacks where, um, uh, what's well, it, Sally Tugbottom? And she's like, I'm the one who told Molly about Sally Tugbottom. And Scratch's like, yeah, you did tell her about that. Thank you. But I brought her here to save her from Tug, who was probably going to kill her. Or probably something like that. Because remember, Tug punched Scratch so hard, opened the portal to the ghost world, and he just flew in there. So And he got Sally back. And, and then Scratch is like, Molly, I, I brought help. So that came back. Um... Then Scratch is like, oh, um, they go to like a like a memorial service or something or a museum. He said, I introduced Molly to Abraham Lincoln, and um, 
Oh, <laughs> which I think that's a really nice callback. Um, uh, what else? We got we it was the Sally Tugbottom statue, um, the Abraham Lincoln picture. That's that's all I can remember. Mm. And Libby made a quote. I'm like, I wish they could have went more in depth with it. I, maybe they were just pressed for time, but you know, and Scott's like, oh, I'm Molly's real best friend because I'm her first, like even before you, like right before school, like I was her best friend because you know she moved into my house, and you know, Libby basically said like, I'm her real best friend because she's cursed to you, so she has to like you, and Scott just makes like a cute comment like, well, no, we're cursed to each other, we're both in each other's way and in, in, in each other's company, and I'm kind of like, so did Scratch tell her? Did, did Molly tell her that, oh yeah, I'm cursed by the way, and Scratch is cursed with me. Did they tell her, and what time did they tell her? Did Molly call Libby or text her, or was it in the, because we don't see the actual conversation, we just see Libby bring it up, like, oh, you're just cursed to Molly, and that's why you're her friend, which is kind of true, but you know, it's more than that. I kind of wish it was more depth. We actually saw the conversation, so I'm taking a point off for that. I'm like, come on, I would like to say that, oh yeah, I'm cursed by the way, Libby. I said, what? Oh yeah, and Scratch is cursed with me. Yeah, we're cursed with each other. And Libby makes a comment later on. I think that would have been better, but that's just me. I I, I think it would have been better. But um, other than that, we basically like, oh, I'm better, I'm better. And we get to some, um, I'm not too into anime, but if it happens, it's done well. I point out, and this is a pretty cool fight. Not really. Oh, it's like oh, the fight to the death. Oh, and we get the song. Um, oh, um, what was it? The true best friend. Da -da -da -da. And I, I need to bring up. I forgot to mention this. Maybe because I was in a rush or something. But in the first half, um, it's a lose lose. That is my new favorite song in the first half of, this, of season one. Before that, it was um. Best Friends Day, and before that, it was my best friend's bat mitzvah. So yeah, it was my best friend's bat mitzvah. Then it became Best Friends Day. Then it's a lose lose. And this one, oh, you know, like true best friend. It's a good song, but I like it's a lose lose better, in my opinion. I, I, and we have, um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be a pop point or not, or maybe they're just not gonna bring it up. How remember Libby? And the, when they officially became best friends, um, in um, the Wilderness Scout episode, they begin, hey, here's a friendship bracelet, and we never see Molly wear it. Either Molly is a jerk, or just not just animating it. And we even see Libby have this big friendship bracelet using it as, like, a weapon, and Scratch has this big, like, not a katana. Is it a katana? I don't know, but it's like a giant sword, basically. And they're basically fighting against each other. I'm like, is Libby gonna bring this up? It's Libby gonna say, hey, by the way, other than the scratch situation, how come you're not wearing my friendship bracelet? Is that gonna be brought up? I didn't be interested in plot point, but I'm kind of like, I'm just trying to just defend Molly. Why wouldn't she wear it? I, I don't know. I don't understand. I can't defend you, Molly, because there's no reason why you wouldn't wear it. Unless you secretly don't like her? But that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe the, the people of the Ghost of Molly McGee, the crew just doesn't want to draw it and animate it. But why make it in the first place? Why it's not... Why just just have Libby say, Oh, hey, Molly, you want to be my best friend? You know, um, we met in school and I, I enjoy your company. So, you know, let's become best friends. And Molly says yes and goes for the hug. We don't need to have this... French bracelet thing that is never going to be brought up again until this point, but and that's what I'm kind of wondering. Is Libby going to bring it up to Molly? Or is Molly going to start finally wearing it? But why weren't you wearing it before? I don't know. I hope I didn't swallow my gum. I'm not sure if I put it in the trash or not. Ew. Just one second. Other than that, sorry, I just don't want to uh, cut this. I just 
need some water. Um, anyway, what was that? Oh, yeah, the, the fight, and you see, like, you know, it's all anime style, and, you know, Molly's eyes are darkened, and the big chair, like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, it's all the true best friend. Ah. And you basically had, to, like, the, the final thing where, oh, it's kind of like, you know, turnip fest, and, oh, you have to, like, um, what was it? Find a clue in the turnips or something? And Molly's basically in, like, the turnip, um... But she's like on the conveyor belt. That's so dangerous. I know. Ugh. But um. <clears throat> and you know, and basically, um, the term, like one of the terms that Libby and Scratch throws, it hits a button, and then Molly's trapped in terms, and like, oh no, oh no, I'm gonna be crushed to death, and um. And Scratch and Libby are still arguing. And she's like, Scratch! And Scratch is like, oh, ha Libby. Can you be magically summoned to Molly's every wake and need? Huh? The, I'm her true best friend. And then he gets summoned to her. And Libby's like, yeah, I guess you are. And Libby feels defeated and walks away. Ooh. And Scratch is like, hey, Molly, how's it going? It's like, what's going on? What are you doing in here? Oh, Scratch, you have to save me. And then he tries to do the same thing in the first half, which frustrated me. He goes through the metal and, and it hits her head. And I'm like, and Scratch like, oh, I forgot about that. Seriously, Scratch? Seriously? Ugh. <sighs> anyway, that just annoyed me. It's like, oh, you you need to get, like, and then, oh, there's just like a combination. And, you know, and Libby's, sorry, and Scratch is like, oh, it's just a combination. I'll do one, 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 one. Is that working? Oh, I'm not smart enough to do codes and dates. And, and Mom's like, Libby's good with codes and dates. And Scratch is like, yeah, I know. Ugh. And Libby's in a huff, walking away. It's got no Libby, wait. It's all oh, go away, Scratch, I'm not talking to you. And then, wait, wait, Libby. And Libby's still walking away, like, wow. And Scratch is like, oh, Libby, wait. I just don't want to lose Molly. Okay, because you're her human best friend. And this curse can go go away if she moves out. I, 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 okay, he doesn't exactly says that, but basically said, the, the, you are her best friend by your own will i am her best friend by a curse and the curse was an accident sort of it's complicated and i'm not smart as you and i wish i was as smart as you and i molly is in danger she's about to be killed and i need your help so please is we molly's in danger yes please you have to help me okay and libby swallows her pride and scratch swallows they both swallow their pride to help molly and molly's like you do help me. And then Scratch is like, you're trying to hold her. So, um, you know, with her hands to make sure she doesn't slip and fall. And Libby punches in, you know, the combination. And she actually puts in, like, um, a, she puts in a combination. And she you know, she thinks about it. She puts it in. It opens. And they fly out. And then, oh, you're amazing, Libby. Oh, you too, Scratch. You saved Molly. Thank you. Because that's Libby's best friend. And Scratch saved her. And you're and like, oh, how did you do that? Oh, I... Put in the um, the um, the town founding date, and it's on like the water tower. And oh, you know that was the combination. Oh, okay. And you know, basically, Scratch and Libby are kind of getting along. We start thinking, how about I stop, basically, um, defying the person and saying every ne negative thing I can think of, and maybe start thinking about some positive things, and basically saying. And Scratch is like, oh, wow, Libby, you're really smart. You're not just some shy person. You have your intelligence. And you're, you're very you're very quick. And um, and so, oh, Scratch, you, you saved Molly. You're a hero. And how and then Molly kind of feels left behind. Molly, you caused this. And you have to do this, you know, um, the song, Two Best Friends. So not, as, not good as um, it's a lose-lose. But still, it's pretty good. And then... Um, Scratch um, says, I know it's like his way of offering, and he's a ghost. He eats disgusting things. He's like, I have a still cake, and I wouldn't mind sharing it with you. And Scratch even says, what's with this sweet baby corn thing with Molly? It's not catchphrase. It's not catching on. And then Libby's like, yeah, I know. And Molly's like, what? And she even says, sweet baby corn, let me stop. And then say, oh, didn't they be, take a photo for real? And they're both smiling. And Molly's back up like, what the heck? And that's the end of the episode. Um, I give this episode a, okay, let me, let me see, let me look back, um, let, let me see.
Mm -hmm. What does this start with? Um, right. Scratch spinning on Libby. Libby knowing about the whole curse situation, which would have more in depth with that. How'd you find out? I can we we can probably guess, but still. Um, what was it? Um. Um. Trying to. All right, mulling the turnips. Scratch doing the whole going through the wall thing. Um. I'm pretty sure there's one more, but I, I can't remember. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing. Um, Eighty-five, yeah, yeah. I give it an eighty-five percent. This was a B plus, and I think the first half was I gave it like an eighty. It was an eighty, eighty percent, just a B. So overall, this entire episode, eighty-three percent. First half eighty, second half eighty-five. So eighty-three percent, no eighty-three point five, but yeah, you know, so eighty-three percent. This was a great episode, a B. And everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, give me a big thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for The Ghost of Molly McGee Season 1, Episode 10, the mid-season finale. Um, I, I forgot what the episode titles were called, but the first half is a Hanukkah episode, and the second half is a Christmas episode. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.